All right, welcome to Scientific Figure Preparation in Adobe Illustrator and Fiji. I'm Sarah Smith from the Stowers Institute for Medical Research, and this is part two, image data. We're going to look at some different tools in, in Fiji, also known as ImageJ, um, that will help you get your microscopy data into Illustrator. So we'll look at the channels tool, brightness and contrast, grayscale, composite images, the ROI manager, scale bar, and copying to the system so you can get your data into Illustrator. So I already have Fiji open here and I also have my folder open with my data in it. Um, my figure 1a is just going to be one uh, uh, image figure, just one image. And we're going to have individual channels and then the, the merge. So I'm going to open that. Here's my three channel image. So I want to do grayscale images of my green and, and magenta channels. And then we're going to have a merge that also includes the DAPI. Um, I've used magenta instead of red because that is more accessible to people with color blindness. So keep that in mind when you're setting yours up. Um, I'm going to now open my workhorse windows, which are going to be my um, image color channels tool for my channels and image adjust brightness and contrast for brightness and contrast. So to see grayscale, I'm going to click on grayscale and um, so I, I can look at my brightness and contrast in this window. So brightness and contrast should, should be adjusted. It can be adjusted different ways depending on what claims you're making about your data. And this is where we get into image ethics. But um, right now in this paper, we're going to be talking about morphology of the cells. And so it's okay if we have a little saturation on the high end of the image. Um, what we don't want, what we never want is to adjust the background, um, the dark shades to be so black that you can't see any uh, noise because if we if we raise our background up so high that can disguise some data that we have and maybe uh, be a, it could be a re misrepresentation of data and we wouldn't want that that would be ethically not good so um, we're going to make sure if I click reset that gives puts us at min max so that way we make sure that we're at the bottom of our range and then I can adjust my, my max over here. Okay, and you can see there's still some noise back there, which is what we want. We want to be able to see that noise if we increase our contrast. So um, that one looks good. This one is a little high in the background. Um, if I click reset, it, it sets and we can still see there's noise back there, which is good. And then finally our DAPI. That looks fine. Looks fine. All right. So um, we've adjusted our brightness and contrast. Now what we want to do is figure out what area we're going to crop out that's going to be in our um, figure. So say I'm really interested in this interface between these cells, so I want to focus on this area. And for aesthetic reasons in my figure, I want my image images to be square. Um, so to do that, what I'll do is I'll just draw using my rectangular selection tool. I'll draw basically where I want it to be. And then I'll come up to Edit, Selection, Specify. And then I can see, okay, I made it 330 by 335. That's pretty close to being square. I'm going to change my 330 to a 335. And then we'll be nice and perfectly square. All right, and then I can click in the center of this and I can move it around so it's exactly where I want it to be. And then I can go image, duplicate. I want to duplicate the hyper stack. And then I finally have, this is, this is the, what I want to appear in my figure. So I can go ahead and close this. Now remember we wanted to get, get individual grayscale images and then the composite. Um, there are a couple of options in the channels tool. We can choose grayscale, we can choose composite, we can also choose color. Some people prefer to do color, um, but, uh, 
a lot of people argue that you can see more, your eyes can see more variations in intensity in grayscale format, and it's also a little kinder on um, people with, with color blindness. Um, so it's good to put your single channel images in grayscale if, if you have that option, if your boss lets you. Um, so let's go back and, uh, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to point out. An easy way to change your channel colors, so say that you had a, originally acquired channel 1 in, in red and you wanted it to be magenta, is if you're in color, have channel 1 selected, then you can change the color under more here. That's a fast and easy way to do it. All right, but what, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to grayscale. And um, for the first few channels, I'm just going to select all and go under edit, copy to system. And then I can go into my illustrator and I can press uh, and I can paste. Oops. There's my one, one channel. You can see it comes in pretty large. We'll have to deal with that later. There's my Here's my second channel. Put that in. You can also press Control V. And then finally we're going to do our composite. And with our composite we want to include a scale bar because it's always important to put a scale bar with your microscopy images in a figure. So um, the way to do that is to go under Analyze, Tools, Scale Bar. And you'll notice that my image already has scaling. You can see up here that it's 93 by 93 microns. Um, and But if you don't have scaling, it'll say 335 by 335 pixels. And if you don't have the image scaling in your, in your image, you're going to need to fix that and talk to one of us, talk to somebody in microscopy to help you. Um, so uh, in the scale bar, I'm going to set it up. I want my scale bar to be 20 microns across. I want my height and pixels to be 10 because I want a nice juicy scale bar because this whole thing is going to be smaller. And then I don't want my text to show because I'm going to put the text in using Illustrator's text tools. And so I'm going to carefully write down that this, text, this scale bar is 20 microns. Okay. All right, and we also want to um, convert to RGB for our multicolor image before we copy it. That's going to lock in our scale bar for our um, illustrator and also make sure that we get all three of our channels. All right, so I'm going to control A to select the whole thing and then I'm going to go uh, edit copy to system and I'll put it into put it into Illustrator, into my Illustrator document. And we will deal with all these in the next section, how to get them all aligned. Another thing that I wanted to show you is that often you have a bunch of figure or a bunch of images and you want to select a subregion of each one and put them all in one panel of a figure. So um, you want them to have the same size of, of your, your final cropped image and you also want them to have the same um, brightness and contrast because you want them to be equivalent to each other when the reader is, is viewing your images. Okay, so I have a couple here and so first I'm going to crop out my favorite cells and so say I just love this cell and I know that I want it to be cropped just like this and I want all of my other images to be cropped in a similar shape so that I have a nice grid of images in my um, final figure. Okay, so what I can do is I do my rectangular selection using this tool and then I need to add it to the manager. I can either press T or I can go under Edit, Selection, Add to Manager. And that puts it, and that puts it in the manager. Um, then I can go over to my next one and I can click click on in on my selection here in the manager and I can choose you know my other cell that I'm interested in. Say I want this region or this region. Okay, that looks good. 
So for both of these, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate those out. Great. Those are going to go in my image, or in my figure, later. And But now, first I need to, first of all, I'll close these, and I need to contrast these so that they're both the same. All right, I think I need my um, DAPI to be looking a little bit more intense. These are not the best images in the world. They're just sample images that we took to calibrate the microscope, in truth. Um, so I'm going to brighten this up. I'm going to increase the maximum. Um, and then I'm going to look at my composite. Oh, that looks great. That just really knocks my socks off. And so what I'm going to do, all three of my channels are, are um, contrasted the way I want them. So I'm going to go under here. In my brightness and contrast, I'm going to click set. Um, I'm going to leave these numbers. I can write them down if I want to, so I can remember what they are. But I'm going to click Propagate to all other three channel images. So all the images that I'm going to put into my um, Illustrator file are already open, and what this is going to do is it's going to take these, they're all similar images, all the three channel images, all acquired the same, and now they're going to all be contrasted the same in all three channels. This will actually apply all three channels of contrast to all of the images, which is what we want. So I'll click OK. Um, you can't really, that wasn't really obvious, let's let's put some crazy contrasting on. So say, say my, I want my magenta to be just ridiculous. Don't do this, but for the sake of example. I'm going to click set, propagate to all of the three channel images, OK. Look at that. So that changed both of them. Um, and so we can put them in our, our uh, in our figure the same way that we put the figure 1a in. So now we have um, some image data inside of our page and we're going to need to align it, we're going to need to put it where it belongs and we'll do that in the next section um, which is part three layout. Um, so I'll see you then.